Exosound E28. Now that was my first high-end DAC. I consider it high-end well, not because of its price, but because it was my first DAC with no digital glare. Now, although I have had a gazillion DACs over the last few years, I only recently upgraded my Exosound DAC to the Matrix X-Saber 3 as my reference DAC. Not because I was not happy with my E28, but because I cannot use the E28 in Windows to watch YouTube, well, unless I use optical input. I never had the urge to upgrade because the E28 was good enough. Now, having said that, I always wonder how the higher end model would sound. Like, wouldn't you? How much better can it get? So I met the owner of Exosound Egg Exponent this year, and he agreed to send me their top of the line Exosound E82 streamer. Man, I was looking forward to it because I've been using DAX in the $1,000 to $3,000 area in the last few years, and I've gotten used to that level of performance. Would a $7,000, $8,000 streamer be a significant improvement? Or are affordable streamers so good today that there is no point? Because you have to consider the law of diminishing returns, right? Even if the S82 is better, is it worth the extra cost? That was a trick question, by the way. There is no correct answer because what something is worth is different for everyone. So after waiting for a few months, the S82 arrived at my place. The S82 is Exosound's two-channel version of their streamer. The S88 is the eight-channel version. That S88 is a stereophile Class A Plus recommended product, and the owner told me the S88 and the S82 are the same sonically. So, did this Class A stereophile recommended product blow me away? Okay, although I noticed something special the first minute I powered it up, it was not until later, after I got the system matching well, that I truly understood why it was on the stereophile. Class A recommended product list. For me, this is the Focal Speakers of Streamers. Extreme resolution and detail. So, my audio buddies, today let's talk about the Exosound S82. Exosound is a Canadian company and all its products are made in Canada. The S82 is their top of the line two channel streamer and uses the ES9038 product chip. Like all modern streamers, it supports various formats such as DSD, DXD, PCM, MQA, etc. There is both RCA and XR output. You can access this interface using a browser or connecting the HDMI port to a TV. Here's the exciting part. You can use either one power supply or two power supplies. If you want to use two power supplies for maximum performance, one will power the DAC and the other, well, for the rest of the unit. The S82 I received has a Rune core and it came with a two terabyte SSD. They also have a six terabyte version. So I look at Exosound's website, hoping to find something to differentiate it from the more affordable DACs, right? Eight grand, seven grand, no joke. And I found something interesting. However, I had no idea what I read on the website. So I called George at Exercise, ask him to explain to me in simple English. I will share part of the interview at the end of this video, but you know, I'll quickly summarize one or two points. First, the S82 uses a true asynchronous yeah, how does I pronounce it? USB interface with error correction. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong. Most DACs have no error correction. So this is the first impressive thing. Next, the streamer has four clocks, one master femto clocks for the DAC and three to control the streaming. Now, ideally you would want one clock because you will eventually have a conflict if you have more than one clock. In this case, we have four but in a non-conflicting arrangement. Now, remember I mentioned the asynchronous interface earlier? This allows error correction, and there is a big enough buffer with the design 
to let the streamer fix any jitter caused by LAN and USB connection. Now this, you don't find in a typical DAC. So with other DACs, yeah, you might sometimes have a pop or loss of split second of music when there are data issues. The jitter level is also lower compared to other DACs with femto clock and blah, 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 blah. So I am not an engineer and George was almost giving me a university course on this. So all the fancy technology, how does it sound? As I mentioned, this is the focal of DAX. The S82 detail retrieval is next level compared to every other DAC I've tried. Every single detail is so distinctly precise. It is almost as if you can take a knife and cut out the edges of the instruments, making the 3D positioning of instruments in the soundstage easy to pick out, super easy to pick out. The slight echo around the singer and instruments gives an extra layer of air. When using the S82 in my system, heck man, it reminded me of my friend's $300,000 system. See, whenever I go to his place, the information I can hear from his system is just mind boggling. His system is so precise that I sometimes joke with him. Hey, uh, I can locate the distance of the cello from me, seven meters and 34 millimeters. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but you get my point. With the S82 at my home, man, I felt my system got closer to that system. Okay, I'm dreaming. I pick up nuances better. For example, when I listen to the guitar on the S82 in my system, heck man, I feel the reverb coming from the guitar's wood much more. Does that even make sense? The realism is quite convincing. Next, the S82 is not super dynamic, meaning it's just right, not over exaggerated, but the micro dynamics, ooh, that's very good. Above all, the DAC is super transparent. I thought DACs like SMSL, Topping, Guster were transparent. Yeah, the S82 is like, hold my beer. Let me show you how you are a frog living in a well. Let me show you what real transparency is. On top of detail, mid-range clarity is exceptional. It took me a while to get used to it because I was worried it might be too lively for extended listening. See, one thing I noticed with high-end audio is that I need to put some effort into system matching. Why? High-end audio tends to push things to the max, maximum speed, maximum dynamics, maximum clarity, blah, blah, blah. So it is easy to go overboard. If you're not careful and you don't get the matching right, you might run into problems. But if you do, hey man, it's audio nirvana. Now with the S82, the mid-range tends to go for that lifelike presentation instead of that smooth romantic presentation. So despite having a lot of clarity, I could listen for hours without a problem, but I needed a smooth amp and good recording. The bass is interesting. It's more on the natural side. As I said, it was not exaggerated, not super fast, not overly dynamic, but honest, yeah. So what about areas of opportunity? Right, the quality of your, your recording and source is vital to get the best out of the streamer. I use it with Tidal most of the time. And yeah, I love Tidal can connect to it reliably every single time. However, it is a step up, a bit rounder on the edges, a bit fuller when I use JRiver with SACD, with my SACD and CD rips files, like DSD files. It can get slightly sibling when I use it with Windows when playing YouTube with optical input. So why optical input? Well, it only has ASIO drivers for Windows USB. So you need a player like JRiver, for example, to access it. Windows itself will not see it as a device. If you want to watch high quality YouTube like me, you must use the built-in interface by HDMI to access YouTube. Next, the remote is made of plastic. And if I press the volume up button for more than three seconds, it will accelerate and raise the volume to maximum within seconds. So you better not have a 1000 watt class D amp connected to it. When turning up the volume fast, it might give your speakers a heart attack. Well, okay, you can set up the volume limiter in the interface. Finally, the display is too retro for me. Even a $1,000 Ever Solo streamer has a better display. So, one more time, if you're more into the smoother, musical, romantic, layback kind of presentation, yeah, this might not be for you. After all, not everyone is a fan of Focal speakers. 
So, let's wrap it up. It has been a long time since I heard this level of detail at my place. The S82 is for those who want to retrieve every possible piece of information from the music and experience that next, next level of transparency that all affordable DACs cannot offer. I mean, all the 50 plus sub $3,000 DACs I've tried, nope. Suppose you are into critical listening and want to hear every note in the music. In that case, yeah, the Exosound S82 should be on your audition list. All right, guys, till next time. So on the USB side of things, you don't want uh, streaming module timing in regularity and, and uh, USB interface timing in regularity and delays and everything to impact the sound. So what do you do? You do buffer of, of the data on the dark side. So it doesn't matter how good is the transmission, how good is the cable, everything can, is stored in a safe, uh, safe space, if you want, on the DAC. And then the very precise master clock of the DAC would read this information and play it. But it doesn't matter. You, in an extreme situation, you can unplug the USB cable and plug it again, and this is not going to affect the sound. So that's that's about the uh, error correction and the synchronous. You send the data 10 times faster than the playback. So you have spare data. If something goes wrong, you can repeat the operation after that. Well, okay, and, here, here's the thing. Do normal DAC, normal budget DAC. If the data sent is incorrect, does it go back and say, hey, uh, send, send it to me again? No. Okay, so what about in your case? Does it go back and say, send it to me again? Yes. Okay, so that's the big biggest difference. Yes. Okay, so there's error correction then. The, the, biggest, uh, the biggest difference to me is that, see, errors are obvious. When error happens, there is, uh, there is pop, uh, there is click in the sound. When, when the timing of the streaming chain affects the sound, you don't know. You just get a tin can sound because the note is played not where it belongs, but just before that or just after that. So the, the biggest thing about the asynchronous USB is the elimination of transmission jitter. So every note plays at the exact time you expect it to be. Like these days, everything has femto clock or whatever super fancy clock. And you say that you have, what, four clocks? That's, that's right. There are, there are four clocks there. Okay, so what about a normal DAC? Do they have four clocks also, or maybe two? No, it's it's not the count of the clocks. It's how you use them. Okay. You uh, one one very good engineering practice is to use only one clock, so there is no disagreement between clocks. Mm -hmm. Another another approach is what we do. So the auxiliary clocks, the three auxiliary clocks, they control the transmission of data from. Uh, uh, from network streaming or USB to the device. So they, they provide the maximum possible quality of streaming data to the internal buffer of the S82. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, this internal buffer is like internal memory storage. That's what it is. And you read from this buffer and you give the data to the DAC chip Mm -hmm. using the FEM2 clock. Mm -hmm. Now, where this breaks with third-party devices that uh, don't have a, a synchronous transmission is that your, your delivery of data is irregular. It will go, like if you have two clocks, they, they are going to disagree in, in certain time, time interval. If you don't have the asynchronous operation, this uh, disagreement between data transmission clocks and uh, audio playback clocks will take place uh, sooner or later, and then, then you lose the advantage of the fem to clock that you have in your device. It's not just having the fem to clock. You have to allow it to do its magic. Well, what do you mean by asynchronous? That, that was in the beginning of our conversation, right. how you deliver data via USB or net. And the, the secret to the success of all this is using together the fem to clock, the asynchronous transmission, and the error correction, and the galvanic isolation. Galvanic isolation would kill the noise. The asynchronous transmission will, will make sure that the femto clock will never have to wait because of lack of data. 
the zero resolution loss volume control will make sure that there is no loss of resolution, no noticeable noise uh, loss of resolution when you use volume control. And you put them all together, and the result is what you see, extremely resolving streamer. Mm -hmm.